Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video on the Phoenix Block 2 and how it now handles. So in the Block 1, uh, you had to put significantly more input into the actual side stick to achieve what you want. Now it's a tiny bit and the reason I wanted to make this video is I see so many people still saying like my landings are not good, I'm floating down the runway, um, you know, I'm finding approaches really difficult, and it's because they're doing this. So if I, I disconnect uh, the autopilot here, so uh, just mute the alarm. Um, so pe people are doing what they, what they tend to do in Boeing and stuff, and they're, and they're doing all of these kind of movements like this. And as you can see, not really a lot is changing apart from you creating some turbulence, and even like small movements like this, it's kind of, kind of pointless. Like. But look, nothing's really happening as I, as I move this around. So what you need to do in the Airbus now, um, and it obviously it does depend on your stick a little bit, but so we're slightly off the path here. So notice how little input I need to put in now. It's the most tiniest amount of input ever is needed. Very small amounts. And this is true when you do the flare as well now. Um, a lot of people are pulling back way too much on the stick and it's causing them to kind of like uh, float down the runway. You now need to like, you still need to put a little bit of flare but not really that much. Um, so we're approaching Bristol International Airport in England here um, and there is a little bit of wind, um, not a lot. We've got like two knots of wind here. Um, so as we kind of do the approach here you can see I am putting a little bit of input but I'm not like I'm not doing what I w used to be doing before which was to put a lot of input like this in you don't need to do that anymore um, you can see e even if I do that the Airbus doesn't really respond to it um, you have to do these small sort of like concise movements now and it's actually really easy once you get used to it um, because even if I let go of my hand here it's still going to fly that path um, it's kind of auto trimmed out so it's a lot easier than say like the Boeing where you've got to kind of keep trimming and stuff uh, now all you got to do is these tiny little movements so we're slightly below the glide path here which is um, actually okay at this airport because it's quite a short runway um, it, it, it's actually better to be slightly below the glide path um, obviously we're a bit slow I would have uh, kind of set our speed a little bit higher and then a bit and, and down to 130 when we get to this point but obviously uh, I just wanted to <laughs> have some time to talk to you guys about the side stick so as we're approaching here um, we will flare about 30 feet but we don't need to do a lot and just a note my rudder is actually broken <laughs> so I, I it's very unlikely I'll be able to stay on the center line but that's nothing to do with the side stick uh, that is because my rudder is broken Fifty. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Now we do the flare. 20, three, Look nine, how much I'm pulling back. Five, just a slightly bit. And then we'll touch the runway like that. Um, and then we can obviously put our reverse thrust on. As you can see, I <laughs> I can't keep it on the center line because my rudder is broken. Uh, so it's just pulling off to the left there. Right even. Um, but as you can see, um, I'm just checking in the FSI panel right now, um, but that was a 200 feet per minute landing on the sensor line, even with my broken rudder. Um, so you can see I didn't put a lot I, before. I was flaring back to like here, <laughs> but you know I, I I only need to flare a little bit. Um, so that's the difference. Just tiny little movements. Um, if you remember that, you usually will be okay. I just also wanted to show my joystick settings here. So I have all the sensitivity set to 30%, the dead zone 0% and a completely linear curve. Um, so that's generally what you want to have uh, in this new update. 